I invested in Meta in 2022 when everyone was selling the stock. But now my investments have more than doubled. I should be asking myself the question, what should I do next? Should I take profits on Meta? Because you don't know what is going to happen next. Maybe we are going to see a recession. Maybe there are going to be new regulations and the stock will crash. Or maybe I should hold the stock because this is a winner and you should let your winners run. Or maybe I should buy even more of Meta because the market seems to like the stock a lot right now. This is the main question we are going to try to answer today. And to answer this question, we need to look at Meta today, the recent earnings, the future of the company, where it is going. And from that, we will try to calculate the intrinsic value of the company. So let's start by looking at the loss earnings. It was record breaking earnings for Meta, a record quarter for Meta. As far as the year two, it was a record year. I have seen this chart in many places. There is a correlation between the free cash flow a company is generating and its stock price. The market in 2021, 2022 did not like Meta so much because they were spending a lot of money on building the Metaverse. They are still spending that money, but what happened in 2023, what changed was the fact that Meta was able to reduce cost. That's why Mark Zuckerberg called it the year of efficiency. He was able to make the company more efficient by reducing costs. So even if Meta lost over 4 billion US dollars in reality labs, that is the Metaverse, it doesn't matter because the main business of Meta has been doing so well. The market seems to have forgot that Meta is losing that much money on the Metaverse. Speaking about the Metaverse, now we come towards the future of the company, where this is going. Two years ago, the market did not like the Metaverse. It was such a big idea. Nobody knew if it was going to work or not. But since then, things have changed. When we are talking about the Metaverse, it's mostly a obvious. We see that now even Apple has entered the market, but it's different. Apple is more personalized while Meta wants you to be social. So it's different what they're trying to do. But seeing the reviews on the Apple VR headset, people are interested to try this. And probably Meta making cheaper products are going to succeed. In a way, they're trying to be the Android in AR VR. And they are trying to be Google a lot. Actually, if you think about it, the metaverse that they are building, in a way, they want to be Google because what Google does is that this is where you go on the internet to look for other things. And the metaverse platform that Meta wants to build is the platform that you connect on this and from this you go to other places. In many ways, the metaverse that Meta is building is trying to be the Google of the metaverse. Will this succeed or not? I don't know. Of course, I'm an investor in the company. I believe in the project. I believe in the management. Mark Zuckerberg is a genius. I believe in what he's doing, but there is no certainty that they can succeed on that. And as a value investor, I would like to put that apart, aside, and focus on the main business of Meta. Coming to that, they have been able to make it more efficient and they have been able to find new ways to make revenues. They started threads. They have been trying to monetize WhatsApp. And most importantly, and this is something that affects me personally because I use it, Meta Verified. Charging people to be verified, of course, is additional revenues for Meta. And this has certainly contributed to the revenues of Meta. Of course, it's not that much right now, but if we are thinking about the future, more and more people are using Meta or using Facebook. There was a time when we were saying people won't be using Facebook anymore, but this is not the case. People are using Reels on Instagram. These apps are more popular than ever. As value investors, this is the main business we are looking at. We try to calculate the intrinsic value of that business. This is exactly what I did. You can find everything on my research platform. If you're interested, you can have a one month free trial on the research platform. By the way, something very big is coming with the research platform. So please subscribe now. If you subscribe now, you're going to have a good surprise very soon. And it's going to save you a lot of money. So when I calculated the intrinsic value of Meta, looking at the main business only, because to calculate the intrinsic value, what we do, we look at owner's earnings and then we discount these owner's earnings. So how much cash the company can return to shareholders over its lifetime if it maintains current business. If you are thinking about the Metaverse, this is not current business. This is not the business of Meta. This is a separate business they are growing. So every investment in the Metaverse in reality labs, even when I'm talking about metaverse, it includes everything in terms of reality labs, 
even the rebound. This is in growth. And every investment there is growth capital expenditures. If we look at the main business and we discount it, for me, the company is fairly valued. And then you have to add the value of the metaverse and I give it a negative value because we don't know where it is going. They're spending a lot of money there. So I give it a negative value. But this negative value is countered by the fact that they have such a good balance sheet. So they have such a good balance sheet with a lot of cash. So even if I give the metaverse a negative value, the fact that they have cash in a way protects them from that negative value. So in a way I can sell the cash. I know Meta is using the cash to buy back shares and that's because they have such a high cash flow generation that they are able to do it. I prefer to be conservative. I'm not looking at cash flows that the company has generated this year to estimate future cash flows. I'm looking over the long term. What happens if we have a recession? How much cash flows I am certain that they are going to generate? This is what I use to calculate the intrinsic value. And even if we base our valuations on that, we see that Meta has high returns on invested capital, returns on equity. So very little capital needs to be invested in the business for huge profits. This is a great business. Over 25% returns on invested capital in a year. Last year was a bad year for Meta and the returns on invested capital was 13.7%. I know if you calculate it, you will see, you will get different numbers because my definition of returns on invested capital is different compared to the textbook definition. So Meta is still a growth stock. For the bad year, 13.7%, they have been able to grow their capital. That's still a growth stock. For this reason, even though Meta might be a little overvalued, I will still hold the company. And also I need to consider my portfolio. Maybe for you, if it is 100% of your portfolio, you will consider take some profits, invest somewhere else. I don't know. But for me, with is still cash in my portfolio, I'm looking for alternatives. If I find an alternative where the company with a high certainty, I can say, okay, it can make me 50% a year. Of course, maybe I will trim my position, invest there. But why trim my position when I still have cash in my portfolio? So I need to take all of this into consideration. And looking at Meta in my portfolio to this is the largest position. Yes, it can be volatile, but it doesn't matter. It is a great business. And for the time being, I'm still holding on Meta. A business that uh, many are saying is like Meta in 2022 is PayPal. I would recommend you watch this video about PayPal. Have a nice day and goodbye.